We're on the road with Mickey, we're gonna have some fun. Regardless of the rain or sun, our trip has just begun. So buckle up, let's go, we're about to start the show. And maybe if you like us, you'll see where else we'll go. Hey everyone, I'm Mike, and she's Sophie. And she's Brenda. Hi everyone. And he's Grogu. He is so excited. We're excited he's here. Yeah. yeah. He's like, it's Christmas season, everybody. Let's go. Exactly. That's why he's excited. Very excited. And we're on the road with Mickey. This is episode 196 for November 27th, 2023. And our feature topic this week is our top three Christmas movies coming to Disney Plus or already on Disney Plus. Yay! We love and Christmas time. It is Christmas time. We're so excited. We had a great Thanksgiving. Yay. I hope everyone else did as well. And we are uh, going to get into that in just a little bit. But first, we have some cheddar from the big cheese. And Sophie, you start us off this week. All right, then. Well, coming to the land formerly known as Dino Land USA, that's an animal kingdom for those of you who forgot, an Indiana Jones-themed attraction. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Josh DeMauro said Disney is going all in with the Indiana Jones attraction, which will also include both an Encanto and a Coco attraction. In Dino Land USA of all places? Yeah. I'm kind of interested in this. I don't exactly know how it's going to work out because these all seem like such different movies. Don't they? Yeah. Especially when I thought we heard that they were turning that place into a Zootopia themed area. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know exactly what it's going to end up being. I don't think it'll be called Dino Land USA, though. Definitely not. Well, uh, certainly not. And um, I'm just wondering how all this will merge together. He Hopefully was asked, it will merge together. <laughs> I think it will. He was asked about how an Indiana Jones might fit into Animal Kingdom. And he said that Animal Kingdom, I think I'm kind of pay, paraphrasing a little bit, but I think he said it was something about how um, Animal Kingdom is also about action and adventure or something oh, like yeah. that. And yeah, so, could... so from that, it kind of fits in. Yeah, well, um, I mean, the thing is, I could totally see Indiana Jones and Animal Kingdom. I could absolutely see it, but I just can't see it in the area that seems to be all about the animated movies like Zootopia and Kanto and Coco, which are three things that we are associating with that area. If there was going to be an Indiana Jones ride somewhere in Animal Kingdom, my first guess would actually be to put it in the Asia area, you know, with Expedition Everest and all that, because in the movies there actually is a part a movie where it's based in India. So it makes sense to be in Asia. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. You we'll know, see. they always, Disney always seems to make it work. They do. They you know, do. We, I, I never thought Avatar would work in Animal Kingdom. I'm like, why does. aren't they, why aren't they putting this thing in, in, um, in Hollywood studios? It belongs to Hollywood Studios, a movie, people, <laughs> you know, and yet they made it work. So yeah. they made it's it beautiful. work, made it work really well. And if so, they're going to redo Dinosaur Ride to be like the Indiana Jones, they already have a head start because the one exactly. in Dis Disneyland is just like the dinosaur. I mean, it's very similar to the dinosaur. Yeah. So if they're going to redo That's that true. ride, that gives them a kind of a leg up already. Mm -hmm. We just need and, to trust the, the process. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. All right, well, that's my bit done. Who's next? I'm next. So I want to say congratulations to Hong Kong Disneyland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sophie is so excited <laughs> that the world of Frozen Land has just opened up there. <laughs> she told me 
that she was so overcome with emotion that she wanted me to give this cheddar. And maybe she didn't say any of this, and I'm going to hear about <laughs> it later. <laughs> but it does sound exciting to me. There are two sections. <laughs> oh Brenda gosh. snorted. That's hilarious. <laughs> there are two mm. sections to this land. Arendelle Village and Arendelle Forest. And there are, I think, two roller coasters. Well, no, one roller coaster. It's um, it's something about Oaken. And then, <laughs> and then they have Frozen um, Ever After. Mm. Um, and then they have places to eat. And they have places to shop. And they have character meet and greets. And on and on and on. So it just sounds like it'd be really neat to see this. You know? So Well, Daddy. Look- Beautiful. To be yeah. completely transparent here. Uh-huh. I am not too upset about this. <laughs> you just that's she's good. not upset. She's just upset that I put words in her mouth yet <laughs> again. <laughs> Correct. We don't talk about frozen. No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we don't talk about Sophie. Got it? <laughs> Got it. Got it. Good. We only talk about Frozen when there's new Frozen stuff. Like last week, Frozen 3, Frozen 4. Yeah. Frozen, the world of Frozen. I think they it's even time have, for us to go on to Aunt Brenda. Yeah, let me tell one last thing and then we're moving on to Aunt Brenda. They even have a, a drink or a, a, some sort of ice cream, you know, slushy kind of thing called the a Frozen, frozen drink? Frozen brain freeze. <laughs> I'm like, who would buy that? Who wants to get a brain freeze? I don't know. I don't know. But I learned a long time ago, if you get a brain freeze, put press your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. Oh, my gosh. Those things hurt. Oh, they do. Oh. So well, hard. I'm jumping ship on this whole Frozen thing, and I'm going to get on to Disney Cruise Line. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Good Take segue. Me with you. <laughs> Disney Cruise Line opened its second year-round home port in florida yay located in port everglades near fort lauderdale the disney dream is sailing out of there right now and the disney magic starts sailings out of there in may of next year it looks really pretty in the photos oh looks like a really pretty port yeah and that's the port that cindy and i are sailing out of when we take our cruise the end of january there you go we'll talk about that in a further episode we have but we we did an excursion, signed up Very for an excursion. Good. So we'll talk more about that later on as we get closer. But Yay! Butch and I are going out of Galveston, of course, since it's right down the street on the 21st of January. So we're going to be cruising people in January. Yeah. Ooh, it's going to be fun, fun, fun. Yes, it is. Someday I'll get on a cruise. We'll get uh, you there. Have so the money. We'll, we'll get you there. Anyway, that's our cheddar. Great cheddar, guys. And now it's time for a feature topic. Our top three Christmas movies coming or already on Disney Plus. And Sophie is going to start us off this week. So, Sophie, how are you doing your order? Well, I don't have any particular order. Okay. However, I have noticed something about the selections that I finalized because let me be clear, I had five. I could not narrow it down to three, which is what we're going for. We're going for top three. I had five. So I went on Disney Plus with the intention of watching a bunch of these and seeing if I could narrow it down that way. Well, unfortunately, two of my things were not on Disney Plus. Oh. Well, do you want to tell us what those two were? I will save those for honorable mentions at the end. Don't worry. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. But for now, I noticed something about the three which remain. There is a varying scale of how Disney they are, I would say. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go from least Disney to most Disney, if that's all right. So you are having a scale. Sounds like a good idea, actually. Yeah, I don't have an order of how much I love these three because they are such good movies. All Christmas movies are, except for one. Um, 
Oh, you gotta tell us at the end which one that is. Elf with Will Ferrell. I will. I'll be very clear about that right now. I don't like that movie. Really? And it's my favorite. Uh, you two can watch it as much as you like. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. I never watched it, and then I watched it twice, and I love it now. Oh yeah. my gosh. Watch it as much as you like, Daddy. I'll be off doing something else. Anyway, (laughs) on to the three movies that I have chosen. So I'm going to go from least Disney to most Disney because that's my ranking. And the least Disney movie that is a Christmas movie that's on Disney Plus, I double checked, is going to be Home Alone. Okay. It's a classic, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a Disney movie. Right. However, it is a very good one. And just to be clear, do either of you two have Home Alone on your I list? I do. Okay, yes. then I'm making a slight change and making it Home Alone 2 because that one is also very good. It is good. And that's funny because a lot of the second of anything I don't like, but that one is that one is a good one. Yep. So Home yeah. Alone 2 for me because it's like the original, but it's set in New York, which is classic Christmas territory. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, um, you're absolutely right that it's not a Disney. It's a Disney acquired because it's part of the century, mm-hmm. 21st century Fox deal. Mm-hmm. I think that's why they have it now. Yeah, but you're right. It wasn't. It wasn't a Disney movie, um, but it's part of the family now. So good. Good. Yep. Good way of uh, of elaborating that. So um, am I the only one who, when watching Home Alone two? Always thinks of Feed the Birds from Mary Poppins. That you're not the only one. Oh, I think about it too. Oh no, I think about that all the time. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Oh, good, good, because that's a definite tie-in. I think. I mean, there's so much to like about Home Alone and Home Alone Mm Two, but I think I like Home Alone Two better because Home Alone has so much antagonistic points in it. And and it's really her mom trying to get home to Kevin and yeah. and make it up and all that that really yeah. brings it sucks it in you know at the end. But mm-hmm. there's so much, you know, that's that's not going on. It's like, you know, it, it just so for me that that it's the ending of Home Alone that I like the most. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Home Alone 2 is really is really kind of cool because it yeah. feels softer because Slightly there's softer. Cause there's other things that are going on in addition right. to him trying to s- escape from the other guys again. From the oh, and I also planets. love it, too, because it shows all the Christmas, like the Christmas decor mm-hmm. in New York, which, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. I like That's... it because it has Donald Trump in it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, I refrained from I saying forgot that, about that, but I can't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Good job. Good choice, Sophie. Good choice. So is it my turn? It's yeah. your turn. All right. Well, number three on my list, because I went from the ones I like least to the most favorite. Okay. Okay. Um, Number three is the one that I was mentioning that Sophie knew what I was talking about, that it had come out last year, even though on our website we were looking at for information on this, it said it was coming out this year. But that is the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. I will be completely honest, I had no idea what he was talking about. (laughs) Well, it did come out last year, you're right. It did. Last year. But I, I mean, it is... It's not a very long movie. It's just a short kind of thing, but it's so cute. It, it is. is so yeah. awesome. It is. And it, it, it's just like. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and the yeah. golf Kevin Bacon thing. And, I know it. You gotta be careful. There's the six a degrees bit, of. <laughs> there, yeah, there's a little bit of language at times, and <laughs> you gotta watch that. But there's so also a golden retriever kids. in a space suit. Yeah. That's true. And that is just adorable. It is adorable. That's true. And and they're like, we got the hero Kevin Bacon. He's like, no, I'm I just an actor. He's like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We got an actor. That's just horrible. Oh. <laughs> it's just so funny, people. If you have not seen it, 
Go watch it. It is really, really kind of cool. It's it's just so funny. I don't know. It just kind of sucks me in. And so I watched it the other night and I'm like, this is just funny. (laughs) It's so funny. You're right. So that's a great movie. Yeah. So, or at least a great special. Yeah. Guardians has great music in it all the time. It does. Uh It sure Mm -hmm. does. All right. Well, Brenda. Well, I had no particular order, but sitting here looking at them, I th- I decided, well, you know what? I'll do oldest to newest. Ooh, so that's, that's what I'll do. One. So right. I'm going way back to 1947 <laughs> to a movie I've watched every year since I can since I've been born every year. 30 Miracle on 34th Street, the original oh. OG Ooh. movie with oh, Natalie yeah. Wood. I I mean, there's something about that movie. I can't, there's no Christmas without Miracle on 34th Street. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know the story, the there her mother is like the head of Macy's. Um, and and she's very independent. She's a, a small child, but very independent, very matter of fact. She does mm-hmm. not believe in Santa Claus. Um, and then Macy's for their parade, the Macy's, you know traditional parade hires this man as Santa Claus and he is Santa Claus and he has to prove to Natalie Wood's character that he is Santa Claus and that she should believe. And it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? One of the best things about that movie is when, when they're on trial, he is not Santa Claus. And then all the mail comes in. Because the the government is never wrong. Yep. <laughs> and they That's they right. received mail that said it was Santa Claus. That's right. And all that mail proved he was Santa Claus. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Proved prove he was Santa Claus beyond the shadow it of a doubt. It was so funny. It was so, so funny. funny. But it was it's it's just great. And I know I they that made movie. it with somebody. I don't know who they remade it with, but the one with Natalie Wood to me is just wonderful. Yeah. 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 That's, That's a great, great one. Great choice. Great. Thank great you. Great choice, Brenda. Thank you. All right, Sophie, number two on your list. All right. This one is another very popular movie. And this one is definitely more Disney than Home Alone because I am almost certain that Disney actually has made this movie themselves. It's not a Fox thing. Um Question, does anyone have the Santa Claus on there? Yes. <laughs> okay, Santa Claus 2 for me then. But no, no, no. We I are... actually have both. Do you? <laughs> we have so much alike. Santa I have... Claus 3 yes. then. That's that's the one with Jack Frost. That yeah, one's I don't like that my one. least favorite. I know. Yeah. But the what thing of it is, is you told me no dupes. No, it's fine, baby. It's fine. Okay. We'll we all have that. good taste. That's, I'm taking know. the Santa Claus, the original one, then. There you go. Santa Claus, yep. Yeah. For the longest time, whenever I was thinking of Christmas movies that were not the Polar Express or something to do with Jesus, the first one that came to mind was the Santa Claus movies. Maybe it's just because I had a crush on most of the boy elves in the movie (laughs) i don't know (laughs) bernard is very cute very very cute um but i just i really liked that movie i thought it was so quaint and so charming the idea that santa not only had his magical north pole family but he also had a family down south because everywhere is south of the north pole And I thought that was just so interesting. And -hmm. it reminded me a lot of the stories that I would make up because I am a story writer. For those of you who do not know, I haven't talked about it in a while. But one of my stories was this thing called the Secret Santa Society. And basically, it was this worldwide agency. It was even more worldwide than the United Nations and the Geneva Conventions and all that stuff. It was more worldwide than that because there was an agency in every single country on the planet. 
and they were tasked with helping Santa to spread Christmas joy, peace, and cheer to everyone on earth. That's and wonderful. <laughs> they were run by this girl named Samantha Claus. She was Santa's daughter. She was the only one who lived at the North Pole. And the more I thought about my personal story, the Secret Santa Society, the more I thought about the Santa Claus. So that's why it's one of my favorite series overall. I personally like the first movie more than the second, but that's just me because I'm pretty sure that most people would say they like the second movie, The Mrs. Claus, better. Well, yeah, and you know what? You're good choice, Sophie. Really mm -hmm. good yep. choice. Yep. Yeah. And that's actually number two on my list was the Santa Claus. And then I put, and then I thought about the Santa Claus too. And I thought about this before we started recording, and I was like, wait a minute, the Santa Claus two is the one where he has to get married or he loses being Santa. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that one with the way that that he romances her and then they ended up getting married, I thought was so adorable. So I like the original. I really like it a lot. I, 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 um, I think it's got a lot of humor and it's a really good movie yeah. but i like the second one because you know me i'm a hopeless romantic people <laughs> and and that one is just so adorable to me so yeah. that's why i had actually had written down the santa claus and two <laughs> so yeah and that's so one you, of the one of the ones where the the second one is is as good as the first because it's hard to do that you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah and the third one the third one um with Martin Short like as that. Jack Frost is not as good to me. It's no, because yeah. they made the fake. They fa made the fake Santa, and he was. I didn't like that at all. Yeah, fake Santa. You mean the toy Santa? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was in the second one. No, that was no. no that, that was, was in the definitely third one, wasn't it. It was definitely in the second one. Was because it? Because he yeah. had to have a Santa to run the North Pole. Oh, that's Pole right. That's right. I didn't like that. Married. Yeah, I didn't like that part. Yeah. And yeah. and there Soviet are some Santa. things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there exactly. are some things I didn't like um about the second one. I didn't oh. like I thought Bernard was such a better lead elf. Elf, you know, yeah. whatever his head elf. Head elf. Uh-huh. Um than the second guy in yeah. the second elf in the mm -hmm. second one. But um but anyway, I um I still like that storyline of him having to get married. Yeah, the third I totally one, agree that. Yeah. The, the third one had a lot that was harder. It wasn't as good as the first or the second. Well, yeah, but, but it I also pulled think... out it really well at the end, though, too. Yeah. I also think the third one was a really good way of extending the story. Because when you think about it, Shrek, the Shrek franchise did the exact same thing with their final movie. That mm -hmm. instance of... I regret where my life is right now and I want to go back to the way it was before and then only to realize the way it was before was not as great as I remembered. Yeah. yeah. So that it happens was a lot. kind of like mm -hmm. it was kind of like the coming full circle movement for that franchise. And just to be clear, we have not watched the Santa Clauses, which is a new Christmas show coming out to Disney Plus, and I am interested in it. So y'all in the sh comments are gonna have to tell us if it's worth seeing or not. Okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because we haven't watched it yet. I haven't either. So, but anyway, good choice, Sophie, and good. Yay! Good choice, good choice you. That's and right. Good choice, Brenda, for whatever number two is. So uh, yeah, let's go. Two. Well, my number two is from 1990, and it's been covered kind of already, but it's the Home Alone OG movie, because who doesn't want to get some hot cocoa, snuggle up on the couch, and watch a little kid foil some robbers? <laughs> I agree. That was a great show. That is show. true. That yeah. is true. <laughs> and it's just, and you, know, you know what? You can watch it a hundred times, but it's still hilarious, the yeah. stuff he does to him. It's still... Oh, yeah. And you know what? The thing of it is, is I actually remembered 
going on YouTube at one point, there was a lawyer there who explained that everything that Kevin did to those wet bandits was 100% legal because he was defending oh, his home. That's right. Kevin that's right. was completely within the law when he did all that yeah. stuff. So just remember that. Yeah. Just remember but the that. way, the best part about Home Alone to me is when he's playing the video of the of the. <laughs> Show where the guy is, is shooting up. Yep. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you filthy animal! Right. <laughs> exactly, it was so funny. I give oh you to the count of ten. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh God! Good That's stuff. so much fun. Yeah. Good stuff. Golly, I think we got to go home and watch some movies. <laughs> Listen, I'm home alone all day. I'll watch it for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, number three, Sophie. All right. Now, this one is by far the most Disney Christmas movie there is. And I say that because it literally has Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, Goofy. It's got Max, Scrooge McDuck, Huey, Dewey, and Louie in it. And it is actually another sequel. Call me weird, but when it comes to Christmas, the sequels are good. They are very, very good. And maybe that's just because it's Christmas or Christmas magic or something. But the one I'm talking about is Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas. So there is obviously a Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. Uh -huh. And you can find it on Disney+. Plus. The thing is, I never watched mickey's once upon a christmas i grew up with the twice upon a christmas one so i can't tell you if the first one is better or not but the main difference is the animation styles the first one is obviously in 2d animation and then you have the second one the twice upon a christmas which is in 3d animation and it reminds me a lot of the early 2000s when Mickey Mouse Clubhouse was on TV and I was just a little girl and I would watch that show almost religiously. And I also just really like the story. So it's a compilation of different tales set from each of these characters. You obviously have Minnie and Daisy ice skating together to the most beautiful rendition of Carol of the Bells I think I've ever heard. Um, you have Huey, Dewey, and Louie realizing that their names are on the naughty list and going and doing everything in their power to set that right. And then you have Goofy and Max just trying to spend Christmas together as a happy family in spite of the absence of Max's mother, who is never actually named. But it's just a really good movie it's like three mini movies wrapped into one and it talks about all these good lessons that we can learn in the christmas season and it's with disney characters so obviously i like it mm -hmm. it's a very good movie and i highly recommend it to anyone who has no idea what i'm talking about okay. you should really go watch it it's a great choice all right well that good choice, choice sophie and Thank you're you. right that is least Disney to most Disney. You are absolutely sure. right on that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Yep. Well, what my, is your number one, Mike? I don't you think went it's up to gonna, your favorite. I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anyone. Mm. Um, other than when we see a Christmas Carol in the theater, I mean, mm. in with theater in a park with right. Ira David Woods. The um, other than that, the one that is my absolute favorite, it's not the Christmas Carol that Jim Carrey did, it's actually the Muppet Christmas Carol, oh. is absolutely my favorite version of a Christmas Carol. Sweet, so that is a very good version, yes. And so, I mean, it's just got it, it's the classic story with. You know, because, you know, when Charles Dickens wrote it, um, Rizzo the Rat was in it. 
<laughs> and Gonzo was in it. And we didn't know this when he wrote it in the 1800s, but it's true. <laughs> yes, absolutely. They narrated it. And, and you know, it, it's just, and I didn't, you know, he, we didn't know in the 1800s that Kermit the Frog was, was Bob Cratchit. So, yep. We had but it is, very few Muppet movies where Kermit and Miss Piggy are actually married. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's married true. And happy. But that is that is one of my favorite versions of a Christmas Carol. Is the I Muppet would Christmas. agree with that. So, I would agree with that. That's a great choice. A Christmas Carol is really a very haunting movie. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. But the Muppets, really wakes you it up. gives it this lighthearted feeling to it up until yeah. the very end with the ghost of Christmas future. And yeah, then yeah. they sort of tone it down and they do it very well. They do it right. very, very well. Because then you see, um, you see, who's the actor? Michael Caine? Yes, I believe so. Uh, yeah. Who plays Scrooge? Mm hmm. Um, and he's like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die or something like that. And then and then you you cut back to, to Gonzo and Rizzo and it's Christmas morning. And then and then you hear Gonzo say, and Scrooge, who did not die. <laughs> <laughs> and it just brings it all back. And it's just yeah. so funny. <laughs> So, so Muppet Christmas Carol is one of my favorites. That's mm -hmm. great. That's a great choice. So, all right. Well, and Brenda. what about you, Aunt Brenda? Yeah. Well, what's... on well on my list, I had the Santa Claus. So, y'all, I think y'all covered well the Santa Claus and the Santa Claus Two movies. So, I'm gonna go with my fourth choice oh. as my third choice, and that is Noel. Have you seen it? No, no. I haven't. I've Noel heard of is it. A, a it has a Anna Kendrick as the it main has lead, doesn't Anna it? Anna Kendrick does, and and it was the movie came out in 2019. I uh, kind of the premise of it is that Santa Claus is getting ready to retire, so he's going to pass it on to his son, of course, that you know is going to start being Santa now. It's it's his turn, and he has a daughter also called Noel, who's a little. She's a little uh, shallowish. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe shallowish, and um, I don't know. But anyway, the son does not want to be Santa. He he doesn't have any desire to. He doesn't have the heart for it. All the things he should be able to do, like relate to children and so forth, he doesn't have it. But hmm. during the course of her trying to get him ready to be who he's supposed to be. It's discovered that she actually is the one with all of those gifts. For instance, um, she goes to a shelter and there's a woman living there with her daughter and her daughter is deaf. And so she starts talking to her because she has that gift for relating to children and the and the mother says, you know, she says, blah, 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 you know, she's, she's deaf. And Anna all of a sudden starts, or Noelle is her character. She all of a sudden starts signing with this child. She never has learned to sign, but that's one of the gifts mm -hmm. she's inherited from Santa that the brother should have gotten, but he didn't. Hmm. And so while she's trying to coax him into becoming who he's supposed to be, she's really the one. So it's discovered throughout the movie that she is really Santa, and it's. Wow. I just love it. I oh, think it's wow. really cute. Sounds like a good thing to watch. Yeah, I think it's really cute. So I, I like it a lot. Okay. So I went with that one since I think the Santa Claus was covered well. So. Yep, okay. it's called Noel, and it's it's really cute. All right. Well, All good right. choices. I'll. You know, there's some that I need to rewatch. There's some that I need to see for the first time, and I think it'll be fun. And I think it will lead up to the excitement of celebrating christmas you know yeah. so i think that's just kind of neat so yeah. so All i right hope then. i already posted in facebook just before we started about what your favorite christmas movies are on disney plus so i want to hear from the listeners if you Yay. feel like feel and like responding it's in our facebook group and feel free to tell us your list 
Yes, please right, respond. Then. We love that. And then, of course, there is one last thing. You guys asked me what the two that were on my list but didn't make the cut were, so exactly. I should probably tell you what they are right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the two that I decided to cut because they weren't on Disney Plus when I checked are, these are, I believe, Fox movies, actually. Okay. And the first one is going to be the 12 Dates of Christmas. <laughs> so it's about this girl. She's single. She's lonely. I know it's a cliche. It's a good trope, though. And basically, as she goes to sleep every night, I believe it's on like the days leading up to Christmas or it's Christmas Eve, something like that. But the point is that she is forced to relive this time loop for 12 days. And in those 12 days, she meets a bunch of different people. And every single day, you can sort of find this reference to a verse in the song. So the first night, it's a partridge and a pear tree. <laughs> the second night, it's 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers pipers, pipers piping. Uh, I know there was literally this one instance where you saw a guy with a jersey and it was for this basketball team called the Lords and he had the number 10 and he was leaping over a trash <laughs> dumpster or something and you could just hear it slow down and go do 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 <laughs> as he was leaping and I'm like obvious much and then near the end it's the three French hens which were three chickens that were being pulled out of the oven it's a great movie and she finds love at the end of it obviously Sweet. that's why it's the 12 dates of Christmas. Okay. And what's and the other one? The second one is called the Mistletones. And it's basically <laughs> this girl who forms this glee group, basically, with a bunch of misfits from around her neighborhood. And they call themselves the Mistletones. And they go up against the like main mean girls type acapella group called the Snowbells. Is Anna Kendrick in that one? I don't remember, but all I, I know curious. is that it ended up it's like a grumpy a grumpy in love with a sunshine character type trope and at the end it just they lose the competition or something, but at the end, you see the grumpy guy pulling out a microphone and belting all these awesome Christmas carols with a voice that I'm almost certain it was Michael Bublé or something oh, like that. Nice. And they're just singing in the streets Christmas carols. It's so fun. Sounds like a fun Christmas movie. Yeah. All right. And both of those sound like they would have been really early in your list of least Disney. They would have been, yeah. In fact, they almost seem more Hallmark than anything to do with Disney. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that. Very well, good, good choices, Sophie. Thanks for those honorable mentions. Yeah, of course. You know, we um one of the ones I love is always a Christmas story. 24 yeah. hours of a Christmas story. Yeah. On and on and on and on. Mhm. Mm <laughs> and there's so many funny things about it, but you know, and then he shoots his eye out. <laughs> <laughs> Or almost, he shoots his glasses out. <laughs> and then he makes up the lie that he got punched in the face with an icicle. Poor guy. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Anyway. Any honorable mentions, Aunt Brenda? No. No. Nope. Well, Brenda okay. likes what she likes, and that's it. All right. All right. Well, good topic, people. And now it is time to move on to this day in Disney history for November 27th. And I have a huge one, let me tell you right now. Yay! Okay. I am taking us back... Wait, November 27th. Did I accidentally click the 20th? Hang on. I need to double check myself. Okay. November 27th. Nope, I'm good. Yay! Hey, okay, okay, okay. All right, well, November 27th, 1937, that's why I got confused. This is huge, people. The final cells 
for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs are painted. Wow. The film's grand premiere is less than a month away. Disney's wow. first animated feature length production has required 32 animators, 102 assistants, 167 in betweeners, those who filled in bits of action, 20 layout artists, 25 artists doing watercolor backgrounds, 65 effects animators, and 158 young women adept at inking and painting. Goodness gracious. Wow. Yes, and it's finally done. They just need to film it and finish it. Yep. Yep. Man, what that just changed everything. Yeah. Didn't it though? Holy Everything. cow. Yep. Holy yep. cow. And you know what's funny about that? And of course, happy belated birthday, Mickey. Yep. Yeah. Because his birthday was and Minnie was on the 18th. Yeah. Um, and if you think about it, this film was done. Mickey was nine years old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yep. like I, I can't even imagine a time when Mickey Mouse was nine years old. The thing that freaks me out is that this movie was the catalyst for them realizing they could actually do the Wizard of Oz yeah. in color. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the Wizard of Oz, I mean, when you think of that, you think it's like, oh, this ultimate classic. They never even thought they could do it except that this movie came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what film history it's like its own story. It's the same way we have world history and then there's film history. There's so many stories to be told. Yeah. 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 Well, thank so, you, Sophie. That's awesome. Good history. Great history. Thank you. Sophie. So. So this character. Oh, we're stomping the soap. This is my we favorite. We are diving head first. I don't think this is a stumper, hmm. but this is. A character who's kind of got just a little bit of detail with it, okay? Mm hmm So, you're going to learn real quick what gender they are, okay? So, just think about all that. This character is the mom in residence. The mom in residence. Uh-huh. Okay. This character has a bouncing baby boy. This is Kanga from Winnie the Pooh. It is Kanga Yay! from Winnie the Pooh. What was the third clue? The third clue is that it, this character calls another character dear. And you oh. know who she's talking about? Rue, her little... Mm -mm. She's no? talking. She's talking about Tigger. Oh. She calls Tigger dear, and Tigger is the one. She is the one friend he doesn't bounce on. Oh. Because he gets called dear by by Kanga. Aww. So I thought that was cool. So Very that's good, our character. Sophie. Yay! Thank awesome you. Job. Yeah. There's not a whole lot with Kanga, but no. you don't need a whole lot to know a lot about the character, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. I like and Kanga. She's the mom for all the other characters in the Hundred Acre Wood. She really is. So That's sweet. All right. Well, good choice. Good job, Sophie. Good job. Thank you. And that takes us to a little bit of Walt. A little bit of Walt. In order to make good in your chosen task, it's important to have someone you want to do it for. The greatest moments in life are not concerned with selfish achievements, but rather with the things we do for the people we love and esteem and whose respect we need. Walt Disney. Walt Disney. Walt Disney. Gosh. Great quote. In Great so many quote. ways. Yes. You know? So. In so many ways. Yeah. Thank you, Walt. Thank you, Brenda, Thank for you. sharing that. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Walt. And that, my friends, wraps us up for this week. We have a really 
big topic next week. Oh yeah. yeah. Really, okay. really big. Really big. This is, might be a the hard biggest. episode to get through. Okay. Yeah. We're approaching Walt's birthday. Um, it's the show next week is on December 4th and Walt's birthday is December 5th. Right, Brenda? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And we are planning a day with Walt. So we are planning a day at Walt Disney World with our friend Walt Disney to be there at the parks with us. So we're each going to come up with a list of things that we want to do with Walt, what we want to say, what we want to ride, what we want to eat, you know, on and on and on. And that's that's our topic for next week is a day with Walt planning a day at Walt Disney World with Walt Disney. And we're doing it in honor of his birthday. So bring your Kleenex people. Yeah. Because I no. bet you we're going to need them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that's our topic for the next week. All right. All right. Can we do it, people? We'll Hope see. So. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> all right. Well, until then, we hope you all have a great week. I'm Mike. She's Sophie. That's Brenda. He's Grogu. And we will see you see on, you the, on road. the road. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>